Good morning, candidates. I came across a post which tells about some of the important acts. This will be useful for SBI PO, IBPS PO, IBPS RRB PO, then New India Assurance, say, Administrative Officers, United India Administrative Officers, and also for Specialist Officers. Negotiable Instruments Act, Section 4 defines what is a promissory note. Section 5 tells about bills of exchange. Section 6 says about check. Section 13 tells about negotiable instrument. What is a negotiable instrument? Section 123 checks says about checks crossed generally. 124 and 126 checks crossed specially. That means in favor of another bank. Section 130 check bearing not negotiable crossing. Section 118 presumption as to negotiable instrument. These are the acts that are sections that have been given here. I will also take you through some other material of mine wherein I have told a few details about negotiable instrument. Here, section four, five, six, define promissory note, bills of exchange, check in that order. Section seven defines drawer, drawee, and acceptor. Section 13 of the act states that a pro note, a bill and a check or negotiable instrument. Section 8 says a holder is a person who has got legal title on the instrument. Section 9 says a holder in due course is one who becomes a holder for consideration and without any notice and, and without any notice of the defect to the title of the instrument in good faith. Section 10, payment in due course is one, which is not only as specified on the instrument, the payment should also be, should also take the established practices into consideration and it should be a payment in good faith and without negligence. Section 11 and 12 defines the inland and foreign instrument respectively. Section 13 says a bearer instrument is one which is expressly payable to bearer or where the latest endorsement in the instrument is in blank. Section 14, negotiation is transferring the title of negotiable instrument. Section 15 defines endorsement. Section 16 defines endorsements in blank and full. Section 47-48, a bearer check is negotiated by delivery and an order check is negotiated by endorsement and delivery. Section 54, a blank endorsement renders the negotiable instrument bearer instrument since a DD cannot be issued payable otherwise than on demand it can only be an order instrument that is a DD endorsed in blank is still an order instrument. Section 18 if the amount in words is different from amount in figures check should be passed for amount in words However, in practice, such checks are returned. Section 19 defines instruments payable on demand. Now, point number 11, section 69, if an instrument is payable at a specified place, it should be presented there. Section 22, Usance instruments attract grace period that is, if a bill is drawn payable after three months from date, in effect, it is payable three months and three days after date. If a bill is drawn payable on, say, 14-7, this was written in 2001, 
So let me change it. If a bill is drawn on, say, 14 7 2023, it is actually payable on 17. 17-7-2023. Section 25, if the maturity date of the bill or promissory note is a holiday, it is payable on the previous working day. Section 31, if the bank wrongfully dishonors a check, that is, returning the check for fund reason, when actually funds are available in the account, it should compensate the customer for any loss or damages suffered by him. Number 16, a bearer check is payable to the presenter without insisting on his identification. It is said, once a bearer, once a bearer, always a bearer, which means that so long as the check is bearer, the basic characteristics of bearer check will remain. For example, Endorsement or the back of bearer check will not make it order. The paying bank need not consider the endorsement, even a restrictive endorsement on a bearer check. If a bearer check is crossed, it cannot be paid to an unidentified person since payment is to be routed through a bank account and no bank account will be opened in the name of a person who is not introduced. But now this may not apply. Who is not, uh, uh, I think we have to change it as who is not, who is not having valid identi identification documents. So that is the change between 2001 and now. Now that Aadhaar has come, PAN card has come. Section 89, if the material alteration negotiable instrument is not apparent, then payment against the same in good faith and without negligence will be payment in due course. Section 104, a foreign bill must be protested for dishonor if the law of the country where it is drawn requires it. Postdated checks are not purchased by banks since such a check will not give any title to the bank. In case the drawer dies before the date of the check or countermands payment of check, section 118, 118B. Section 123 tells about general crossing. Section 124 tells about special crossing, a check bearing the name of a bank across its face. Section 130, a check cross not negotiable cannot confer a better title on the transferee. However, such a check can be transferred. Number 24, account pay. Account pay crossing does not find a mention in the NI Act. It has come to stay in practice. The purpose of crossing account pay is to restrict the payment to the payee only. Account payee crossing is an instruction to the collecting bank. Not negotiable crossing is a caution to the bank collecting check for transfer. Section 131, very important. If a bank collects a crossed check not properly introduced customer in good faith and without negligence, the bank will not be liable even if the title of the check is defective. The protection available is called protection against conversion. Conversion is defined as interference with title. Section 138 to 143 provides penal provisions for dishonor of checks for want of funds, punishable with an imprisonment up to, up to one year and or a fine up to twice the check amount if the check was not stale at the time of presentation, stale means three months old. The affected holder notified the drawer within 15 days from the date of receipt of dishonor notice from the bank. 
Royer fails to pay or reply within 15 days from the date of his receiving the notice from the holder or drawer's reply is not acceptable. No court inferior to that of Metropolitan Magistrate or Judicial Magistrate of first class will try the offence. Check bouncing. Punishment becomes harsher. Union Cabinet approved this is long back. The fresh bill to amend Negotiable Instruments Act Proposing doubling the punishment from the present one year to two years. The bill would also provide that cases of dishonored debt should be disposed. Within six months, with, with hearing being held daily if required, the new bill would also make the Information Technology Act uh, 2000 applicable to electronic clearance of checks of truncated checks. Checks issued in physical form where the transaction has been done electronically. The bill seeks to draw a distinction between the executive directors and non-executive directors of companies for the purpose of pinning responsibility for dishonor of checks. Thus, a non-executive director holding the post by virtue of his holding an employment in the union government, state government, or financial corporation owned or controlled by the union or state government would not be liable for prosecution under this act. Stopping payment of post-dated checks and offense. The Supreme Court has held that if a person issuing a post-dated check stops its uh, payment by giving instructions to the drawee of, or the bank before the due date of the payment, he would be liable for penal consequences under Section 138 of NI Act. The object of the Act was to ensure credibility in business transactions and by countermanding payment of post-dated check, a party should not be allowed to get away from the penal provision. If we hold otherwise by giving instructions to bank to stop payment of a check after issuing the payment against a debt or liability, the drawer would easily avoid penal consequences. If stoppage of payment of a post-dated check is permitted to take the case out of the purview of section 138 of NI Act, it will amount to it will amount to allowing the party to take advantage of his own. Case laws on return of checks. Criminal liability cannot be fastened on the heads of legal representatives. An offense is committed even if check is returned on the ground of closure of the account. A check can be presented any number of times during the period of its validity. A post-dated check is deemed to have been drawn on the date it bears and thus the six months. Now it is three months. The three months period for the purpose ought to be reckoned from that date. Then section 141, offences by companies. Section 146, banks slip prima facie evidence of certain facts. Section 147, offences to be compoundable. Every offence punishable under the act shall be compoundable. Pay of a check cannot initiate prosecution for an offence under Section 138 for his dishonor second time if he had not initiated such prosecution earlier cause of action. The NI Act does not say anything without dating and negotiable instruments, but practice has established that an undated instrument is not valid. A check in different inks or handwritings is not invalid just because of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, let me take you to this one. Yeah. So, these are the points covered here. And uh, in my next video, I will tell you about the other important provisions of the Reserve Bank of India Act and also other acts. Thank you.